Greetings from Bulgaria, I'm Volk. And just a few minutes after the live stream from Bioware has finished, I'm here to tell you the recap and shorter version of what I believe is the most important that we need to learn and draw out of the live stream. It lasted for about 40 minutes and the title was Galactic Command Dark vs Light Producer Live Stream. My notes that you can see on the screen together with a couple of screenshots during the video will help me and you get a better idea of what the stream was about and what features Bioware talked about and introduced about the upcoming expansion and uh, patch for 5.0. First, Bioware made it perfectly clear that they are paying attention to social networks and specifically to their own forums. They're completely aware that the gearing in Galactic Command caused a lot of uprisings amongst us, the community. I personally don't know why, we know so little about it and I'm not really sure why everybody is raging against the RNG. It's present in any game, it's bad, but it's by all means not going to be as bad as what we probably, some of us, remember from 2011-2012 with the PvP gearing up system. So. Bauer is fully aware of the complaints from the community about the RNG in command crates and gear drops. Galactic rank and crates aim to simplify the gearing by removing all kinds of commendations existing in the game, along with crystals and anything else that looks or behaves similarly to commendations. The gear will be determined by discipline and row. Bauer listened to the feedback and now the crates reward gear based on the current discipline of your character. So just like we all thought, and I discussed that in my previous live stream, in the top left corner of the uh, Galactic Command window, we have a current role selection. That, together with the currently active discipline of the character, will determine what kind of uh, loot we're going to receive from the crates. The rate of earning those command crates. Now pay attention because this I consider to be much better news than what we initially thought it would be. The aim from the team is that an average pace for a standard player is to earn a crate every hour or so. Playing harder difficulty content will result in even faster crate drops from the new system. The idea is to actually gear up faster than the current system. Yes, there will be RNG, there will be those moments when you're waiting for the last piece and it doesn't drop, but Bioware promises with half-spoken tone that they will do their best to prevent endless gear grind and never uh, looting and finding the piece that you actually need. The weekly cap for, com for command experience points is actually here. Yes, just as well, another thing I talked about in my previous live stream yesterday. There will be a weekly cap, but Bioware promises that it's going to be extremely high and it will probably never bother you. Within the span of a week, you will probably not be able to, by normal gameplay, reach the cap. It's only here in place to prevent potential and most likely eventual uh, exploits that will occur. Bauer talked about the promotions and since I've already explained them more than once, I'm going to skip on the next point. They also briefly explained what the Galactic Command system is all about and that's yet another thing I've explained in a different video. Hopefully I will be linking all of these things down below for you in the description of the video as well as annotations and uh, YouTube cards. So in case you don't really know what Galactic Command is but you've stumbled upon this video which is kind of a further up further up the ladder information about Galactic Command, you, you will be able to go back and check the, the previous updates. More information, well, the bigger part, roughly the half of the stream was about the Dark vs. Light uh, part of Galactic Command. It's nothing like the currently existing Dark vs. Light. Bauer also just published a blog, which probably is right here. Yep, there we go. And it explains fairly well how exactly the Dark vs. Light uh, system is planned to be working. But just a few highlights that I would like to share with you. A highlight act activity which will be different each day from the, command, uh, from the Galactic Command will grant you extra points. The battles will be fearsome and very frantic and very quick as well. The aim is that if you play regularly and for a few hours per day, you will be able to notice and witness several wins or losses. A battle or a round of Dark vs. Light ends once one of the two sides hits Dark 5 or Light 5, which is the highest rank. 
The victory state kicks in after the interval has ended and it will last for about an hour or two. This is still in testing, Bauer wasn't able to confirm yet what the duration will be before the next round begins. This period will offer benefits for both sides, which I will tell you about in a moment. The events, as I've mentioned, will be extremely fast and the idea is that you would be able to participate in at least one of those if you play um, at least for an hour or two. The system relies on the personal character's alignment, but it's not this alignment. All of us know that screen. This is a different kind of personal character alignment. This is yet another new system. This is exactly the dark versus light system that Bioware is introducing with Galactic Command. And this one will also depend on your personal alignment that you are choosing before you begin any kind of activity in the game. You can select that once and leave it forever to be that side. You don't need to change it unless of course you want to. During the victory period there will be bosses spawning around the galaxy when the war is won by one side. Random social events are those bosses on the planets and they will cause players to team up and defeat in teams of 8 plus, which is 8 or 16, probably in between. But the bosses are supposed to be designed and uh, balanced for at least a team of 8 people. They will be on the side of the winning team. So, for example, if the light side has won the round or the battle, light side bosses are going to spawn in random locations on random planet and they will remain active only, only during those 1 or 2 before mentioned uh, hours during the stage of victory. Those bosses, however, can be killed by both sides. So if, you, if you're on the light side and you've won, you can still go and defeat the light side bosses that will spawn to prevent the other side, in this case the dark side, to earn points. Again, about the rewards a little bit later on. The dark versus light part is available for, endly, for any level player and character. People who are sub-level 70 with their characters are going to earn everything that isn't related to Galactic Command. So essentially they're going to earn all kinds of social rewards, decorations and Dark vs. Light tokens, which is new currency. Yes, Bioware removes one kind of token and introduces another kind of a token. Kind of stupid, but what can you do? Let's talk about the rewards listed here. For example... Your side has won. You will gain access to new rewards on the vendor on the fleet, including exclusive mounts, mini pets, and more. Bonus to all command experience points earned during the winning stage or the victory stage. You can stack this bonus with the daily highlighted activity. So, for example, if today you have uprisings selected as highlighted to be giving you more uh, rank points, and you're currently the winner for the Dark vs. Light event, you're going to earn even more points by doing uprisings. There will be special light or dark side tokens, as I've mentioned before, each time you gain a command rank, and you can use those tokens to boost the war in your side. The winning side can still go and defeat the same bosses as I've mentioned previously, to prevent the other side reaping the rewards. And now, the rewards for the defeated side, they will receive bonus to the side points gained for the next round. And they will be able to defeat the other side special bosses for extra rewards and tokens for the alignment of the chosen side. There will be a kind of a diminishing return in place because Bioware is completely aware that people are usually choosing the winning side, unfortunately, and not everybody sticks to their side. So, let's say that there is an underdog on your server and it just happens that every single round has been won by the light side. Every next round is going to be harder and harder, so the way Eric Musco said it live on the stream, even if you have one person playing dark side and everybody else is farming light side points for these uh, war moments, the dark side person eventually one day will get to win because his points earned are going to prevail and win over the diminishing returns that will be stacking after each win from the light side. And then in the end Bioware answered a few questions that were very popular amongst us and especially in the chat during the live stream. Gear from crates is bind on pickup. Everything else from these crates, including decorations and social items and outfits, is not. And you can transfer those things. Knights of the Eternal Throne will have 9 chapters, 
That's probably something we already know already, but apparently not everybody does, so let's confirm it. All of these nine chapters are going to be available at launch, with group and repeatable content being the main focus for the developer team in 2017. Eric Musco admitted a mistake in the live stream plans. One of the dates apparently is the Thanksgiving holiday for the USA citizens. Now, I apologize, I have no idea which one of the dates listed is that same one, but you can do the calculation and if you live there, you probably know when the date is. That live stream scheduled for that day will be moved to the day before or the day after, so don't worry, Bioware has no plans to disturb your holiday. And of course, a quick recap of the future blog and stream plans. Bauer usually does a blog and a live stream explaining what was written in the blog in the same day. For 27th of October, we have Galactic Command Uprisings overview. For the 3rd of November is, command, uh, is Combat and Class Changes in Knights of the Eternal Throne and Patch 5.0. For 10th of November, we have Repeatable Chapters and Difficulty Levels discussion and overview. For 17th November, we have new players and story insights with Charles Boyd. For 24th of November will be the Knights of the Eternal Throne wrap-up and Q&A. Because a week later, or actually five days later, early access begins on 29th of November. And 2nd December is the official launch for all subscribers of Cotet. That's the wrap-up. It actually went way longer than what I intended, but I've shared some personal insights and thoughts, so... <laughs> That's probably another two or three minutes longer than what it should have been. Thank you guys for listening and tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to check out the links below the video and the links to my website with all the news and especially with the uh, collective thread for absolutely everything you need or you don't need but you want to know about Knights of the Eternal Throne. I share all kinds of links and blog posts and videos here, so whatever you're missing, be sure that you can find it here. See you next time, bye bye. Thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video. If so, click the like button and help me out. Also leave a comment and let me know what you think. Visit my website vogue.com for daily videos and news, and stay in touch by following me on Facebook and Twitter. To help me improve and expand, consider becoming my patron with a small monthly pledge.